So this South African team now have a fair argument to go down as the best team we've seen in rugby history discuss. Yeah, I saw Etzebeth talking about you're going to be the greatest to be the greatest team in history. I, 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 from one point of view, understanding the route to a final and beating the best teams in the world, it's a strong argument. For me, the best team has to play the best rugby. And if you're talking about that in my lifetime, that 2015... Um, New Zealand World Cup winning team would I think it would be a stretch to say they'd wipe the floor with this but from a rugby point of view and from um, an enjoyment point of view I think comfortably them And South Africans would say well that's all irrelevant Of course they will Yeah But I'm but saying, <laughs> yeah. saying I'm not, I don't care what they say because they're, they're going to be partisan and they're going to want their own to be the best. I'm just saying in the, in, in the scheme of what's the best team, you know, New Zealand won back-to-backs as well. Mm. They won 11 and 15. Um, and yeah, okay, they might have had to beat the top five, six teams in the world en route to a final, which is a, a, an incredible feat. But... I want to be able to look back and remember um, like, and think, wow, that was great rugby. That really was played with an energy and a, and a kind of end-to-end ability, you know, to link forwards and backs, to have a really smart kicking game, to kick three-pointers where it needs to be from Dan Carter, scoring end, you know, end-to-end tries. I, I thought that all back team in 15 really was very, very special. That, that team made me wonder whether we were capable of winning the World Cup because we got knocked out in the quarterfinal again, could, should have probably, circumstances slightly different, could have been in a semi-final. That Australia team, you, you know, you wouldn't, you wouldn't have known. A, we might have gotten the better of them, fully locked and loaded. I don't think we were beating, the Irish team at the time were beating that New Zealand team. Uh, but then how that process changed and how two cycles later, my overriding feeling watching the game at the weekend is this really could have been us. And I think that's so frustrating to think that if you do, you know, you, you, you get by New Zealand, play another 10 times, you might win five, they might win five. Um, so if you do get that, I think you beat Argentina and then you you play against a team, yes, that... The, ho- the holders, but a team that you've beaten in the pool stage that you don't f- have a great fear factor of, there's a chance. But it's all hearsay because we didn't get it done. They did. They're the ones that deserve all the plaudits because in the tight margin games, they showed, they kn- knew how to win the championship minutes. They knew how to, you know, hold their bottle where they really needed to, um, particularly in, in, you know, Andre Pollard kicking a goal in the semi-final with four minutes to go. Like, that's a, something you have to tip your cap to. And taking all that you've said about the 15 New Zealand team into account and, and very much accepting it, that said, if I put the question to you as you have to pick a team to go in there and play a one-off match against some brilliant opposition with your life depending on it, who would you pick? To play that all that New no, Zealand no, team, some imaginary opposition. Imagine it's a Space Jam movie, and the aliens have flown down, and they're very good at rugby. And you've to send a team in. I'd pick that team. I'd pick, pick that All Black Fifteen okay, team. Okay, so it's it's more than just style. Yeah. It's it's proper. Oh, yeah, I think if you look well. look at that that team sheet, like Nano and Smith in the centre, Carter Smith at halfback, McCaw, Kino, Reed, Whitelock, Ritalik in their in their pump. Um. And then, you know, back three of Ben Smith and Milner Scudder and, and, and Sevilla, like, phew, that was some, that was really a total, you know, it was Woodcock playing still in 15, I can't remember if it was him, but front one of the Franks brothers, mm. um, Dane Coles, like, that, that was a it was a proper, proper team. Yes. That, of of r- great rugby intellect and knowledge and and then drilled within an inch of their lives. Yes, so you still think they So would, I'm still, I'm still picking them. 19, or the 2023 South Africa. Listen, it'll be close, but I think they do. I think they beat this South African team um, on their rugby capacity. I think at times at the weekend, New Zealand 
got rattled by the blitz. I think that the calmness of some of those personnel in 15 would have been able to deal, would have become, would have been a bit less flustered than New Zealand. They felt a bit rushed at times. Guys were, you know, passes were inside shoulder when that blitz was coming and it's a difficult thing to deal with. But one time, one time, uh, Jordy Barrett batted the ball on when he, when he could have just ca- caught and gone through the space himself. They, they overthought it. Okay. They were, almost scared into doing, acting in ways that they w- would not usually behave. Um, and, and that plays into the Springboks' hands, exactly the defensive system that I'd be interested to see other teams, will they incorporate it going forward? It's had huge effect. I understand that it's helpful when you're a massive side, mm. but the psychology of what that blitz does, if you can get it right, is very, very strong 